thank you to the Albuquerque Heights cheerleaders for getting us started on this final weekend of Balloon Fiesta. We have lift off here on the rundown. Thanks for joining us for an exciting high school football week of action and more coming up. Entering week eight tonight, we have some competitive matchups that do have some playoff implications. One of those teams surprising many is the Spartans of Bernalillo. We spoke with the head coach about the undefeated start and we'll show you how they fared against Aztec High. Plus, the soccer program is finding ways to win year after year despite losing players to graduation. The team's motivation that carries on from class to class. And as we inch closer to playoffs, we'll take a quick look at the standings and where teams rank in their class. But we begin at Community Stadium with a powerhouse program working to get back to the state title game. The Cleveland Storm coming into tonight's game at 5-1 on a five-game winning streak run. Their only loss against Centennial back in August. Tonight, they took on the Siebel Cougars, looking for their third one of the season, currently 2-4 and four overall. But the Storm offense, they're off to another productive start, putting up at least 35 points a game. Here's their first drive of the night. It's Juan Munoz breaking tackles left and right. Oh nearly takes this one end zone to end zone. An explosive first score of the game. Cleveland up by seven. What a run by Munoz. Power. Talk about a tone setter, though. The Storm attempt the onside kick after the score. For a second, Cleveland actually thought they had it. Instead, give it to Cibola for some favorable field position. Carroll drops back. He finds a wide open Danny Triplett through the middle. Cougars looking to get some momentum back. That Cleveland defense, Ron, they're too strong. Three mm -hmm. sacks in the first quarter alone keeps the Cougars off the scoreboard. Cibola offense, they'll try it again, keeping the drive alive and intercepted. It's Micah Hoffman with the leaping grab. Nobody around to stop him. Mm. It's another Cleveland score, another week, another win for the Storm, who now moved to 6 and 1 and claim a sixth straight victory, 55 to nothing, the final. Highly impressive there. We move to Milne Stadium, 3-3 three three West Mesa, taking on Albuquerque High. Bulldogs coming in 4-2 and two and bringing out the hammer. <laughs> Mustangs, though, start with the ball. And the first play from scrimmage, Ronnie Galetti finds Isaiah Casares, makes the defender miss, and then breaks through a couple Bulldog tacklers, and he is on his way. No one's going to catch him. 7-0 Mustangs behind a quick start. Now the Bulldogs, first place from scrimmage. They look to go to work. Alberto Landeros takes the handoff. He'll find the sideline and find separation. In fact, he's in a frame by himself here for the big run and touchdown. This one tied at seven. A couple big plays early on. West Mesa's next possession leads to a punt. You'll see Landeros, he's situated near midfield. Brings down the punt. But watch as he is contacted and stripped. But the ball pops right into the hands of his teammate, Santiago Sotelo. Oh, right on. place, right time. Lucky right now. Hey, and the Bulldogs make it work. Julie Madero airs this one out. Look at Andre Martin. Double covered, goes up and claims that football for big time first down. Is it a first down? He says it's a first down. That sets up Madero from inside the 10. He'll keep it, find the end zone for 14 7 lead. But the Mustangs do come back and take this one in a close one 21 to 20. Over now to Wilson Stadium, the Sandia Matadors taking on the El Dorado Eagles. Both teams coming into tonight at 3-3. Three and three. This game was a defensive battle. Check out the hit here from Jeremiah Bustillos, reading that pass perfectly. Ouch. Later on in the drive, it's John Howell dropping back to pass. Airs it out, but he's brought down by Devin Baldonado of the Matadors. Sandia is looking to get their offense going now, but... It's Jaleel Lewis who finds the Eagles. So Caden Dominguez takes it the other way now with this interception. Potential momentum swing right there on that play. Sandia is up 3-0. The Eagles with a chance to get it going. Isaiah Quintana finds a hole for the nice game. Delivering a hit at the end right here to the defender. Strong hit there. Fourth and one coming up from the six-yard line. Emiliano Morrison keeps it, finds the end zone. Takes a 7-3 lead in the fourth. Eagles take this one down 14 to 10. Well, let's take it to Rio Rancho. Rams hosting the Piedra Vista Panthers. Rams pouring it on in the first half. Ethan Roland running left, sidesteps a defender and slides into the end zone. Rio Rancho would lead 23-3 at the half. The Panthers' first position, possession of the third quarter. Uber Marquez to Brig Kaiser. Piedra Vista would cut the score to 23-11. Then early in the fourth, Piedra Vista is threatening. Nick Halverson goes right, punches it in up there. Panthers down just five now, 30 to 25. Just over six minutes to play. Rams quarterback Michael Takahashi being chased one way, circles back to his right, finally throws it, and is caught by James Barreras for a 10-yard score. Rams go up by two scores, 36-25. 
Pirates. The Panthers then cut it to three and after recovering a Rams fumble with 140 to play, Piedra Vista has a fourth and seven here, must convert to keep it going with 26 ticks to go. But Rio Rancho shuts it down and the Rams hold off Piedra Vista in a hard fought 36 33 win. Now, kicking off the week's action Thursday at Community Stadium, Volcano Vista was taking on Farmington. After the Hawks opened with a drive inside the 10, Elijah Hansen to Devin Duncan. And the Hawks take an early 7 0 lead. Scorpions hurting themselves with turnovers. This their third turnover in the first 14 minutes. It's picked by Spirit Cook. I like that name. Spirit Cook weaves his way for the 48 yard pick six. And it's 14 0 Hawks. And the Hawks are threatening again mid third quarter when Hansen cuts it loose deep down the middle. That's Ismael Mendez the third. He's in there. Nice catch for the touchdown. Hawks up 21 0. Volcano Vista rolls to his sixth straight win, 41 7 over Farmington. And this week, Santa Fe Public Schools said the City Police Department is investigating a hazing incident involving the football team. The school district said that they take the situation seriously and that the dignity of all of its students is their top priority. The Demons tonight against Atrisco Heritage will be played without their head coach and offensive coordinator on the sidelines for that game. The Demons would come in at 2-4. and four. The Jaguars looking for their second win of the season. Early in the first, Jags driving. QB Landon Grego, quick drop back pass. Nice diving catch from Smith. Shortly after, Grego finds Smith again. Makes the catch. He'd eventually step out of bounds, but not before he gets the big gain. Next play, Grego fakes the handoff, and guess who? It's Smith, Ron. Again, another first down in a Trisco Heritage, moving the ball well early. Busy man. Jags in the red zone. Grego hands it off to Elijah Lee, who would punch it in for six, up seven, nothing. Demons now looking to respond. QB Jose Rivera takes a hit, but he still gets out the deep ball. Jesus Navarrete with the catch and double coverage. Demons get three on this drive. Next Santa Fe possession, Rivera showing off the read option, faking it, even shaking off one defender despite the face mask. Touchdown, Demons. Tied the game up at 10 at the half. The Jags win in the end, 24 to 18. Looking now at Class 6A after tonight. These rankings are according to Max Preps. La Cueva Corps still on top of the class, followed by Centennial, Cleveland, Volcano Vista, and the Las Cruces Bulldogs wrapping up the top five teams. Taking inventory in 5A, many teams on the bye week. Right now, Artesia is top dog, followed by Roswell, Lovington, Gaston, and Deming. The top five teams here are highly competitive with a lot more ball to play. Now in Class 4A, the Fighting Spartans of Bernalillo High were riding high with a 6-0 record head headed into tonight. Now the school is known for being all about basketball and for head coach John Cobos. He's excited about his team as it heads the growth of his program. Like anything else, when you're winning, you start getting, you know, that support, right? We started out with 17 players and, you know, kind of made our way up to like around 40, right? And, you know, I'm proud to say this year we're right about 70. The culture change was huge. Um, it's here. And uh, we wanted to be relevant every year. We want to build a program. We don't want to be just good one year. Well, 6 0 Bernalillo visiting 0 and 6 Aztec tonight. Down 6 0. Bernalillo's first offensive play is a huge one. Muriel Castro heaves a ball long. That's receiver Joseph Duran. The only player in frame, the DB fell on the play. 80 yard score. Spartans 7 6 lead. Still in the first quarter, Spartans now on the doorstep. Is Castro keeping it around left end. He'll extend this one across the goal line, putting Bernalillo up 14 to 6. And that defense on Bernalillo is called the Goon Squad after the alien bad guys from the movie Space Jam, if you saw that movie. And here's Ivan Ruiz picking off Angelo Griego and returning to the Aztec 26. Spartans back on offense thanks to that Goon Squad. Castro doesn't like what he sees downfield, so he swings it out to the wide open running back, Josh Barajas. He won't be stopped. He scores to put the Spartans up 21 to 6. And the final minute of still the first quarter now, 28-6, Castro directing his receiver in the back corner of the end zone. This pass is going to carry him off a defender, and it's caught by Mario Molinar for the touchdown. They're getting it done every kind of way. <laughs> Bernalillo goes up 35-6 after one quarter and runs away with it 62-12. to I like the movie reference, Ron. I like <laughs> it a lot. Well, the recent number one ranked team in Class 4A, according to Max Preps, Bloomfield taking on Moriarty. Bobcats undefeated coming into tonight's game. And they stay undefeated, defeating the Pintos 42 to 10. Taking a look now at the 4A standings, you see Bloomfield and the Spartans at the top of the ranks. Both win tonight, which means a clash of the Titans next week. Mm. Spartans travel to Bloomfield on Friday. And looking at Class 3A, the reigning state champion, the Horsemen of St. Mike's, currently still atop the standings at 7 and 0, followed by Dexter and Robertson. 
At 4th and 5th, you have West Las Vegas and New Mexico Military Institute.